I'm going to go ahead with the meeting beginning ritual. 起立，面向佛堂，参加先鞠躬，一鞠躬，再鞠躬，三鞠躬，参加各位的传师鞠躬，开班一鞠躬，请坐下。So the question was about the Higgs field and. If you've been reading up on the Higgs field, the description of the Higgs field sounds a lot like the Tao. Like physicists will say, well, we we all live in the Higgs field. It surrounds us. We can't detect it, you know, with our senses, but it's it's there all the same. And absolutely everything in creation, the entire universe, is immersed in the Higgs field. And this naturally has caused people to say that, well, doesn't that sound just like the Tao? And there's also people who are going to say,、uh, "I'm sorry, Higgs. What? Never heard of it. And why should I care? What does it do? Why is it all around us? What effect does it have on anything?" So, these are all good questions that deserve some answer,、uh, and you know, to be discussed from the perspective of the Tao. As usual. I provide a short answer, and then a longer answer. The short answer is that the Higgs field is certainly an important aspect of the universal Tao. But notice that I say an important aspect. I am not saying that the Higgs field is equal to the Tao, but only an aspect of it. And that's because. Existence, reality, the cosmos, the universe, creation itself, contains, encompasses many other aspects, all of which are aspects of the Tao, all of which are significant in their own right. So, Bill just a moment ago mentioned gravity. Now we all live in a gravity field. The gravity that we experience is also an aspect of the Tao. It's related to the Higgs field,、uh, but neither gravity itself, which Einstein calls a space-time distortion or a warp in space, in space-time, neither that nor the Higgs field is the Tao itself. The Tao includes all of them, and yet it also transcends beyond them. So. At this point, for those people who are not familiar with these terms,、uh, like Higgs, I'll provide a a quick explanation of what that is. It's not just the people who are connecting right now, but also later on, people who、uh, view the YouTube recorded videos、uh, may not know that much about Higgs field. So. It has a lot to do with the fundamental elementary particle called the Higgs boson, but that only、uh, switches the question from one to the other. Okay, I had no idea what the Higgs field was, and now I have no idea what the Higgs boson is. You're just switching it around. What is it? Well, the best way that I can explain it is that everything in the world is composed of little things. So every Everything, every material object that we see contains molecules. Molecules contain atoms. Atoms are things like electrons, neutrons, protons, etc. And you know, like many many years ago, people used to think, scientists used to think that was it. You can't divide up the electrons, neutrons, etc. anymore. But、um, ever since the the resurgence. Of physics, ever since Einstein, relativity、uh, giving rise to quantum mechanics, etc., we now know that even neutrons, protons, electrons are composed of even more basic, even more elementary things, and those are the elementary particles in the standard model. So, to simplify, all these different particles are two types. There's the bosons, and then there's the fermions. So, the fermions are the things that make up matter, and it's named after Enrico Fermi. 
he's a he's a, a, a genius. Um, here's what he looks like. Uh, he was probably the last physicist in the modern era who excelled both as a theorist and also as an experimentalist. He could design these experiments. He knew how to do it. He was a, a talented engineer. Uh, he was also the gentleman responsible for the Fermi paradox. If you haven't heard of the Fermi paradox, basically what that says is that, well, we know how old the universe is, uh, you know, roughly uh, 15 billion, 14 and a half billion years. That's a lot of time. We human beings have come from basically nothing to our level of civilization today in just a few million years, uh, probably five million thereabouts. So given that's the case, and we've already gone into space, so another few more hundred years, which is just a blink of time in the cosmic scale, we will be able to just go to nearby stars, not a problem. So in the time span that we've had the universe, there should have been many civilizations like our own everywhere. But the paradox is, we look around and we see no sun. And UFOs don't count. You know, they are not uh, scientifically acceptable indications of advanced civilization other than our own, unless they can come up with something much more concrete uh, than what we have so far. So that's the Fermi paradox. This is uh, an incredible man, incredible genius. So fermions, everything that makes up Everything that matter is made above. This is attributed to him. He came up with the uh, with the Fermi statistics to describe fermions. The other genius that cre that was responsible for bosons, you know, didn't create but rather discover the statistics that describe bosons, along with Einstein. His name. This is an Indian scientist by the name of Satyendra Nath Bose. He worked with Einstein on the statistics statistical model that described these elementary particles, which are then named after him. So his last name is Bose. Elementary particle is called boson. So the name may sound kind of funny, but it's actually quite serious. So instead of matter, bosons are unlike fermions in that they mostly carry force. So photons is light. And Higgs boson, uh, and by the way, let me show you what he looks like. This is the other genius. He's, uh, yeah, you know, he's someone who uh, was capable of working with Einstein. That, that tells you uh, what a tremendous mind uh, he has. So Higgs boson, what is that? There's a, all kinds of different bosons, but there's one that was theorized by Peter Higgs. He's a British physicist. Back in 1964, you know, 48, 40, almost 50 years ago, Higgs um, published a paper that pointed to the possibility uh, of a boson that should exist but cannot be detected. And this is the elementary particle associated with mass. You've, you've got to have something like this in order for, for there to be mass with all of the particles out there, all of the matter out there. So here's the way that I can best describe it to you. Physicists will say things like, this is the all-pervasive particle that slows everything down in the Higgs field. Well, what does that mean? So just imagine that you're on the, uh, uh, you're walking around in uh, above ground and you're running around, you can move around very easily. but when you go into water, you can't move around quite so easily anymore. You can wade, you can move slowly in one direction, swim a little bit because of the resistance from water. So in a way, water is slowing you down. So the Higgs field is like water in that it gives everything mass. And because it gives everything mass, it slows everything down. Without the Higgs field, all particles will be flying around at light speed and therefore would not be able to associate, clump together into matter as we know it today. So literally, without the Higgs field, the universe cannot exist. This is Peter Higgs. 
uh, a more recent picture of him. This is him uh, at 80 plus. So when he wrote the paper, he was 35. Now, many, many years later, when he was 83, what he predicted as a 35-year-old man was finally validated with the uh, Large Hadron Collider. So ever since he wrote that paper, science has been searching for what they knew must exist but could not verify. And this turned out to be anything but easy. That's why it took so long. And because it was taking so long, physicists joked among themselves by calling it the goddamn particle. Like, goddamn, why is this so difficult to find? This is uh, their joke among themselves. So physicist Leon Letterman, uh, another incredible mind in the modern era, uh, he published a book about it. He wanted, to call, he wanted to call the book The Goddamn Particle, but the publisher says, uh, no, we can't have that on the cover. Uh, sorry, sir. So you have to call it a different name. And that book came out with The Ga Particle as the title. So that's a, probably a more respectable sounding name than the goddamn particle. So, and Leon Letterman says, there's another connection that the Higgs boson has with God. And that is because it's associated, this is, uh, this is Dr. Letterman himself, it's associated with a much older book, the book of Genesis, because in the beginning, <clears throat> the book of Genesis is talking about the creation, the creation of God. So this is, uh, we're touching on topics that are of interest to Dow cultivators now. We're talking about creation in the very beginning. So why is it that the Higgs boson uh, is so difficult to detect? Well, that's because it existed for the briefest instance after the Big Bang events itself, and then it quickly decayed into other particles. The only way to see that action, again, is to recreate the condition shortly after the creation of the universe. That's what the particle accelerator was meant to do, is to recreate on a small scale the conditions of the universe shortly after its creation. Then, the theory predicts you can see the Higgs boson again decaying once again into other particles. That's the idea. That's why sometimes the particle accelerator is called the Genesis machine. So hmm, scientists went on a quest to find, find out more about the beginning of the universe. Where did everything come from? People who study the Tao are often interested about this idea of the Tao being the source of everything. So when they want to understand more about the source and the process that gave rise to everything, today the best people who have the answer are the modern high energy physicists, particle physicists, people who are actively working on the Large Hadron Collider in Switzerland. So that's where it was finally built. And years ago, they ran the, they powered it up, they ran the experiment, they collected a lot of data, and then it took them a couple of years to verify that data. But in the end, they did, they did say, yes, we now know, we have seen uh, exactly as predicted by theory, uh, the Higgs boson. In the beginning, scientists being very cautious and being very conservative, they said, well, we have, we have discovered a Higgs-like particle. They, they couldn't quite bring themselves to say that we have found the Higgs boson. So that's the situation today. So just to let everyone know, it, uh, it almost could have been Texas instead of Switzerland. That's because the United States had a plan to build something that was a lot bigger than the Large Hadron Collider in Texas. So the cost would have been $10 billion, and a billion dollars was already spent excavating the ground. They dug this gigantic, monstrous hole in the ground to get ready to build this very large, uh, what they call the superconducting super collider, uh, something that was a lot bigger, much more powerful, 
than the Large Hadron Collider is today and will carry the United States for 30 years into the future at the forefront of physics research. But as with everything else uh, in connection with government programs, it ran into funding difficulties. So people wanted to know if it was worthwhile. So politicians asked the scientist, if we build this machine, Mr. Scientist, will it help us find God? Will it make us find God? And as part of the congressional records, it was stated that, hey, if this machine, if the collider wall will do that, help us find God, then I'm going to come around. Rather than to cut the funding, I will support it. Because uh, you have to remember, you know, uh, a large part of the, of the politicians uh, come from very religious people uh, from the South, from the Midwest, etc. So they're all very interested in this question. Can you build us a machine that will help us find God? Because, gee, you're talking about the God particle, right? The scientist, Dr. Weinberg, was very honest. He said, uh, well, you know, he himself is an atheist, so he doesn't believe in God. So he, he, wouldn't, he couldn't bring himself to say, well, yeah, this machine will help us find God. What he said, what he said is that, well, sir, this this machine will, will help us find uh, the Higgs boson. And in that room, among all the politicians, all the jaws dropped. Everybody was like, "What? You know, not find God, but find Higgs boson? Uh, okay, well, we're going to cancel this project." So later on, the scientists got together. They lost their ten billion dollars of funding. The government spent another billion dollars to fill fill out the hole that was previously dug. So two billion dollars spent to dig up the earth and then to put it back. So scientists got together and then realized that a much better answer would have been, as you as you can see in this particular slide, this machine will take us as close as possible to God's greatest creation, Genesis. This is the Genesis machine, because the idea is that it'll recreate conditions after the Big Bang in order to be able to see the Higgs boson. So now the Large Hadron Collider in Switzerland gets all the glory. The, so Dallas was supposed to become the Mecca or the Vatican of physics, and now it's Geneva. All the, all the Nobel Prizes that are being awarded now to the people working on the Large Hadron Collider American physicists are saying that, gee, that should have been ours. So for Peter Higgs, he doesn't really care if it's found in Texas or in Switzerland. The prediction that he made back in 1964 came to fruition 48 years later in 2010. So I want to show everyone an image of that day when he was there for the announcement of the discovery, finally validating something that he had predicted. And he said, I never thought that I would see, see this in my lifetime. He had pretty much given up hope as an 80 plus year old man. He thought, well, this is probably it. It's uh, for the next generation, long after I am gone, to be validated. But no, it actually happened. And this is uh, a remarkable story of, a, of the great journey of the pain bird. If you recall, when you are inspired, when you have a mission that's greater than yourself, you take flight. And the journey of the pain bird may be very long. It may be a thousand miles. It may take a lot of time, a lot of resources. But the idea is that if you stick to it, one way or another, despite cutbacks, budget cuts, things being moved around, the location of the machine being different now, the engineering being on a different scale, no matter what, the pain bird flies on until it reaches its destination. So here is a real life example of the pain bird arriving at the destination and perhaps already getting ready for the next flight. Oh yes, because because the validation of the Higgs boson provides physicists further grounds to explore, further areas, more questions to ask.
We don't know everything yet, far from it. There's just greater and greater journeys ahead of the science for the scientific community and by extension, all mankind. Let's go ahead and do the meeting ending ritual, everybody. Chiri. Okay, everybody, we are done.